So this is going to be an interesting video. Cupid Parasite, which is another Otome review. So soon after the last one, which did really well. Thank you so much. Anyway, uh, this is uh, Miller's Game Room. Hi, I'm Miller. Welcome to another Miller's Game video. The usual intro, like, comment, subscribe, etc. and so forth. Because, uh, yeah, a second Otome review. It's going to be fun. It's going to be about Cupid Parasite, the game about Cupid and love and romantic comedies and... Uh, other things we don't get in the West much on consoles until very recently, including this game. And uh, yeah, um, this is the game's cover for the uh, European limited edition. Um, well, I say limited edition, it's more, it's called the Day One Edition, which basically means if you wait nine months to get it, you might be able to get it for a bit cheaper, but otherwise you're shit out of luck. And uh, this has got lovely, lovely little box art. I love these like collectible cases. And this one in particular has got a few other like trinkets, just a uh, list there. It's uh, mostly um, decent stuff for, for a launch edition. I've um, probably just have some footage on screen showing it, but you know, fun. Um, this game is uh, an Otomate title. It's um, it's a very recent release in the sense of that it came out in 2020 in Japan and then got localised in November 2021 by Idea Factory international themselves, which is very rare for them and Otome, at least until I hope going forward, but that's for another time. And this one was um, their first release after like three years, like they did Hakuoki and then stopped suddenly for three years and then now they've come back with this one and other releases which I'll talk about another time. And um, this one I played, it's the most recent one I finished in terms of Otome, after Steam Prison, which uh, was a whole other thing. Um, it's been fun. This game is one of their more popular titles. So um, among the releases in Japan, there was like Q4A, recent release was also popular. Um, B Biri Shana as well was also popular, which actually came out before Cube Para. And then it came out next Cube Parasite, and then that's out. It was quite popular, so I'm guessing that's why it was picked up, and it came out of it, and it was great, and easily one of the highlights of 2021 for a Terme, according to those who have played most, if not all, the lineup. So, good and high expectations. Now, this one's a romantic comedy. It's kind of like, it's kind of like closer to what you'd get if you were like Western rom-coms in a way, because if you if you watched a Western rom-com, it's got a similar vibe. We don't get many of those games over here, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of them tend to be quite serious, but this is like the first one that's bucking the trend, and this one is easily like a great way to introduce the genre, because if you uh, don't include PC stuff, like Calme 8 stuff, uh, this is basically for the West anyway, outside of maybe phones, because I don't play phone games, but they exist, so for me it's basically a breath of fresh air. This one has art by Yuya, who is an illustrator who did uh, Café Enchante, that other Otomate release from 2020 in English. Uh, Pub Encounter or Dandy Shot, which is basically older men in a bar, which also sounds cool, which I've not played, but you know, older men, right? And some other Japan only stuff, like if you go on VND, there's a bunch of other games I have not heard of because they were not localized. So nice library to dig into, and in fairness, Give you power is probably among this person's best works because I'm gonna go on to the art later, but just like a lot of the game, it's great. As for the music, it was done by uh, Capriccio Studios, something like that. I can't remember the name of my head because it was a, a, a studio with like two people with um, Nato Shinya and Hanasaki Masayoshi. Uh, Masayoshi, <laughs> yes, Masayoshi. And it's called Capriccio Project, not Capriccio Studios. That's just me making mistakes. Ignore that. So Capriccio Project. And it is a separate soundtrack release as well, because it, it wasn't included in the Western limited edition, but it's got a separate one at retail in Japan. And that's, uh, it's gonna, it's nice to have merchandise for these kind of things. And yeah, while I talk about the music, I just want to say that the music is good. I love it so much. Like, easy one of the highlights of the game is the incredible music. It's like, oh, this is so fun. I can, I can like, stim to it, rock back and forth. It's just so cute and catchy and vibey, it's just like, oh, it's just so memorable tunes and it's like, it's the kind of thing I'd want to listen to in, in like a car, if I was on a car or on a train or studying, that kind of thing, that's how good it is and then 
all these memorable songs, especially the character songs, which um, it's kind of important. But um, I'm kind of jumping a bit too far ahead. So, um, what exactly is Cupid Parasite? Um, it's basically you play as uh, the actual Cupid, or Lynette Mira, which is the name that Cupid chooses for herself by default. You can put your own in, but Lynette's better because the characters say Lynette, so it'd be weird. Like, oh hey, you, you, I'll say you're Lynette, but if your name was Miller or Cheesecake, it's still going to sound pretty weird. So just, just use the default names, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. Anyway, and then she goes to Earth as um, basically to prove to her father, Mars, that humans don't need the power of Cupid to fall in love. All they need is, like, natural stuff in their own environment, in their human world. So nothing mythical, nothing godly, nothing involving arrows and that kind of thing. It's just natural and authentic. And then events happen and she ends up getting a job at this place called a Cupid Corporation, which is basically what Cupid does, but manually. If you consider matchmaking manual in terms of like, people will matchmake but, and get our people together, but um, it's just not the way Cupid does. They're not going to look into a pool and just go, I'm shooting you and you're going to fall in love, which is how it works in the game. And probably mythology, because yeah, there's Greek mythology as well as some themes like you don't need to know much about Greek mythology to understand and have a good time with this game. So um, it will kind of like, you, you can follow what's going on. It's a romantic comedy. It's got this premise. It's more about the characters, interactions, and that kind of thing, even though there isn't a, a, a slight overarching plot, like it's there, it exists, and there are some revelations, but you don't play this game for the, the deep plot in both story and fan service. You play it for the guys. And there are quite a few sexy guys, and now I'm going to talk about them. Actually, scratch that. I'm not going to talk about the guys yet. I'm going to double, ch double um, down on talking about Lynette, partly because no order. Secondly, because Lynette is such a badass protagonist, and if you're going to have a game with sexy guys, you need a sexy protagonist to go with it. And Lynette's like very likeable, very much a very can-do, I'm going to get shit done kind of person. And I really like that, and very career-driven in a sense, and passionate about what she's interested in, which is matchmaking. And it's like, I just love it. She's just like... And as well, like the, the character designer as well, when she's at work, she has her hair done like this, actually. Yes, my hair's tied in relation to the characters in the game, which is, uh, which is cute. It's just not pink, but you don't need pink hair when you've got natural curls. Anyway. Only thing I would have liked is Lynette is unvoiced, and it's like, please voice your heroines more in Otomes, please, because voiced women are better. I think what could happen if Lynette was voiced, it would have made her even better. And, but that's just my preference. I know some people don't mind that. I just would have liked it to have been the voiced heroine or option to have a voice and turn it off, that kind of thing. And now I'm actually for real gonna talk about the sexy guys. All right, so the way I'm gonna structure this with the sexy guys is kind of summarize who they are and just generally like, a, bit, a little bit about them and maybe a part like general premise for the roots, but not really spoilerish. And then later on, I will actually spoil and have its own section because there are some things I have to talk about that I've got to spoiler cuts because this game is so new, most people will not have played it. So I'm gonna start in order because um, when you have the game come up, you've got like five people from left to right and I'm gonna go in order from left to right. So the first one is uh, Jill Lovecraft. He's basically the um, love lawn parasite, which is basically uh, I fell in love with Lynette at university and I can't get over her. And she and and she's got feelings for me, but she thinks like but, he, but I have feelings for Clarice, which is another person, which is one of the side characters who I'll we'll talk about later. But it's basically that kind of triangle thing where it's basically like how can I get her to notice me and. Um, this guy, you know, up university, like, tries to suppress it, but doesn't, and ends up being part of the Parasite Five, and then, which is also, like, the group of guys they're called the Parasite Five, because they're basically, uh, undateable, if that makes sense. The, the people at the company are like, oh, these fucking guys, I don't want to deal with them! And then, they like that, and then, and then you go, here, joins are coming, and the net becomes, like, manager of the Parasite Five, which is also part of the premise. Why did I not explain the premise properly before? Well, whatever. I've, I'm done here now, I'm going to keep going. 
and basically is like, oh my god, Lynette is back, maybe I can actually win her over after all. And um, it goes from there. Uh, next guy is um, Shelby Snell. Like, he's not directly stated as Shelby Snell because when you start his route, it's like, oh, it's blank. You just get a massive pace and then he's like, and he's like, goes via this other guy's secretary called Owen, who's a, he hides on, like, Shelby hides behind the suede in Monsieur Esse. And it's like, it's pretty fucking obvious it's him. And it's like, this guy's like, I'm going to be checking my emails all the time. I'm the ultra workaholic. Everything I do is work based. And for some reason, thanks to some misunderstanding, everyone thinks that he has a wife and he has to uphold the illusion of having a wife. And uh, you can kind of picture how it goes in that route with regards to that. And then, of course, there's the Obsessed Parasite, which is number three, um, Raoul Aconite. He's basically like... He's well at the start, I mentioned that you don't need to understand Greek mythology to have a good time. And unless you're this guy, it's basically like, if he was a real person, he'd be really annoyed at me saying that. Because it's like being super obsessed with Greek mythology. Like, if you have any conversation with this guy in the game, there's almost always something about Greek mythology brought up and like... What the fuck, mate? <laughs> it's like, this guy's seen as undateable in the Baron's like, five because he's like, oh, every, every time I talk to a girl, it talks about mythology and like, mate, I don't care. Like, most people don't care. That's basically the team of that guy and it's interesting to go down his route and kind of see that and um, not only that, because um, Raoul is like a Sillywood actor, which is basically a parody for Hollywood, which is a um, very silly name in itself. But this guy's like, you get to explore this little silly world bubble and see different perspectives and all like like early on he's like talked about like like the fact he's own doing the, the film a film that in the in-game world at the time and he goes to the cupid corp to basically learn how to fake love which is also cute but also like you're here but you're not actually looking to date you're here because you want to pretend to learn how to date and then pretend you're dating this person for your movie, which is a whole other thing. And then number four is basically Ryuki F. Kaishin, if I've got it right, I'm so sorry if it's wrong. And this guy's basically like the, um, well, the obligatory half-Japanese character, because that's always seems to be a trope in these games. But also the guy that's like, if he doesn't, like, see you as pretty, he'll either ignore you or give you a... a colour code, like if you do HTML and look and paint and that, you get codes in the editor, that's what that is. And then they've all even better won't well, spray the bottle. So like having that little porn perfume just spraying in people's face, so pss, pss, pss. and then it's just like that's a thing. And it's just like it's kind of elitist in a way, but also like kind of like a tundra trope as well, because like, oh you might be a bit obnoxious, but you're nice really. It's that trope. And it's decent, I suppose. I'm not really the biggest fan of Tundra Tropes, but it was a good character. That pretty much all the characters I like. And then I went to number five, which is uh, Alan Melville, which is basically... Um, he's only interested in people already in relationships. So he's basically the, um, the guy who encourages cheating and seducing other women and the womanizer. He's kind of like the bad guy. And you just kind of see this because I think the Japanese always loved him and it's like, it's hard not to see what. Like you see this guy through, he's like very charming and seductory, but also kind of nice. And um, it's really cool because, um, yeah, he was good. And then no, like, he also went to Pillow Shop, which is really weird for like, not just a game, but like in general, like, you go to the shop, like, oh, that's a small business running pillows. Like, why do you own a pillow shop? Like, you just, you go anyway. You don't need to go in a bloody 1950s, like, Los York style world and just which is the world it's set in which is basically New York but in the 1950s but even more cute and kawaii and also with um great um, TV presenting where you get Japanese voice actors speaking in English which is actually really charming actually I think that's a good chance to transition into like just the aesthetic because before moving into spoilers I'll do the aesthetic first which is oh my god it's amazing like I've been putting screenshots up for this video in the editing process and you kind of see all these vibrant colours not just you as art but like the buildings the walls having these colours that are just like so like 
unnatural looking, but also like perfect for the fantasy light-hearted vibe of this game. And it's just, I just love it. And like, especially when you get to like the sunsets and the night views, especially for the beach. And it's just amazing. I just love it so much. And just like, it fits perfectly with the music and the overall light-hearted tone. And then also when you do factor in Yuya's art for the character portraits, it looks great. The CGs look stunning. I fucking love them. Just so many bright colours and it's vibrant and it's just wow. It's <laughs> just so good. And uh, definitely a looker. I really want an art book. Please, art book. Cute. Please. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. And now my thoughts on the game before I dig into spoilers a bit, before I go back to that conclusion. Um, this is the... I liked all the routes really, like, no, there wasn't a route that was bad. Um, the only route I would like the least, which is still good, was Reiki's route, mainly because the trope, I'm not, not a fan of a trope, but then it goes up to like, Shelby, and then to like, Raoul, I believe, I can't remember the exact order I said they were in. Um, like Alan as well is up there as well, point at number, number three. And then number two is actually uh, the secret route which is basically you finish the, all five routes for the guys and there's a sick route with a different person which uh, that's a spoiler but that's there if you basically do all the routes and then like you want to start a new game it just appears and it's a straight shot so I'll talk about that in the spoilers and then finally at the top is of course um, Jill which is just I really like the trope of that guy and that cuteness and that passion and that really kind of showed and I really liked it and anyway, um, to spoil a little bit more, and it's spoilers, so uh, warning, three, two, one. I really like Ninja's route, how the whole like, when at some point like the net goes back to heaven and the world above, and basically she was like, I gotta go back and get her, and then he ends up like doing that, and then a certain battle ensues, and you go to heaven, and it's like, I fucking love that scene, and it was great, and then. And then they like you got different things like in Shelby's route. There's um the funniest scene in the game for me where like there's a scene where Cupid tries to get her dad off her trail, shoots him with the arrow, and he ends up falling in love with a robot with a robot vacuum cleaner. So um that was funny, but like it's great. And also in the sick fruit as well, there was skits in the sick fruit as well. And uh, other things like uh in Rail's route there was a a dynamic about trip to Greece, which has happened towards the end of the route, which is interesting as well. I liked that one a lot, and then the end of that was really wild. And then there's Alan's route, which is like, it's just so different from every single other route in the game. But the advice is generally to do that one last if you're going to do a playing order. And I can see why it was last, but it was also kind of like, the best one to sum it up for me would be, what the fuck the experience? Because it was like, it started off fairly predictable, and then it was just like, where is this going? But in a good way. And I did like that route overall, and um, Especially when you see revelations about like Alan's backstory and how that ties in to the overarching plot as well and that was really uh, interesting. And I mentioned a sick route briefly earlier and that's basically you start again and this is a different character who you hear of in the game in the other routes but you don't see them unless there's one or two scenes but I've forgotten. And then it's, you basically start in a different angle, it's basically Cupid actually goes down with permission and it starts from there to university and then back to Cupid Gorp and then back to that. So it kind of felt like the truest route. And then the end was basically stopping this other mystical antagonist who's um, vaguely alluded to in the other routes as part of the overall plot. But you don't know who this person is till you get on that route and then it ends. And then after he's defeated, because yeah, he lost. And then it's like, you get all, got to defeat this person with the power of love. And it's really cute with the power of love. Because love can conquer all, and in this case it definitely did. Ah, yeah, it's so cool. And of course, like, I just loved it in general, like, I'll put in a spoilers here actually, because um, it just thought it was so funny, just playing this romantic comedy game and just laughing my, uh, my, uh, my ass off with these funny, like, skits and stuff, and this so, overall, like, really light-hearted tone, and just see really, like, cute characters, these sexy guys. Some of the CGs are a little sexy, so you get to see uh, sexy pecs. Pecs from someone else? Mm -hmm. Perfect. What the fuck am I even doing now? Anyway, 
Do I recommend this game? Uh, yes, it's my, uh, as of the Otomi I've played today, especially on the Switch, it's my favourite today of all the ones I've played. Like, I've played a, quite a few at this point, not so much the newer Switch only ones, but uh, this one, yes. And um, it's very lighthearted, very cute, really funny. It's quite long as well, so like, if you're playing it, you'll probably at it for about 40 hours, but that's not a bad thing. Probably more than 40 if you're a slow reader or trying to read it in Japanese, because yeah, got a Japanese version. Uh, if you're going to play it, um, get the patch, because uh, when it came out, it wasn't... The QA was uh, not done the best for a couple of routes, and then it had to be fixed, which, um, to Idea Factory International's credit, they did fix it fairly promptly, whereas in other companies, that didn't happen for these uh, QA, unfortunately. But I think since then, that's been increasingly less of an issue with these localizations. So um, just, yeah, be with the patch. I did with the patch, so get the patch. If you like romantic comedies or really light-hearted visual novels, you might like this. Even if you're not normally into a term, if you like like the premise and like light-hearted games, you might get some good mileage out of it actually. Um, if you want something like, like if you like the art and the music, or want something that resembles the Western society, because that's what the aesthetic broadly likes as well, you might like it a lot. If you have an interest in Greek mythology, you might get more out of it than I did in that respect, especially if you are also your own little obsessed parasite. Because if you know that stuff, then you probably might like the references more. I thought it was cool, but I'm not into Greek mythology, so I'm not credible in that respect, unfortunately. But anyway. And, um, yeah, if you, um, I can't really think of anything if you wouldn't want this, to be honest, but I'm guessing if you want something more serious and plot-heavy, uh, or stay away from this one, or if you're not into Otome, uh, and you really can't stand light-hearted games, then, um, or, or you just want to play Moega instead, just, there's plenty of other things out there for you, but I think generally if you're really open-minded and want something really cute, light-hearted and funny, this is a great pick. And thank you so much for uh, listening, watching, etc. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. So on and so forth. And uh, enjoy the game for yourself if you decide to get it. It's um, it's definitely probably going to be one of the cheap ones, especially if you're in Europe. Like the European store does decent stuff on sale sometimes, but that's just me or e-shops as well. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye bye.